Hey there guys, it's Ben once again from GameReview.com. We are back with another weekly news roundup. And just before we get started, there's a quick note I want to make about our website. We're going to be having some content upcoming from what happened at PAX Australia. So I would keep an eye out for that. But other than that, let's get on with this week's stories. In yet more controversy for Blizzard, three more Hearthstone players have been given a ban. This time the ban hit a US college team after they held up a sign during a tournament live stream that was showing support for the Hong Kong protesters. This obviously follows the recent incident where another Hearthstone player was banned for showing similar support to the protesters during a live streamed Blizzard event. Initially, no action was taken against the three players and the stream continued, but afterwards Blizzard hit the team with a six month ban from all esports events. Casey Chambers, one of the team members who goes by the name Excelsior, tweeted out about the team's ban saying that he was glad that players are being treated evenly for violations and that they quote, knew what we were doing and expected a punishment. So obviously another piece of bad publicity for Blizzard, a second incident in such a short space of time is nothing for them to be happy about. And the problem is they've kind of set a precedent with the first ban. So if more players keep doing this kind of protest on live streams, it could result in another ban and then another ban and it could completely ruin Blizzard's esports image altogether. Riot, who were known almost exclusively for League of Legends up until this point, have announced a massive new lineup of games on their 10th anniversary live stream. These include Legends of Rune Terror, which is a new card game launching in 2020, League of Legends Wild Rift, another 5v5 MOBA that will be available on mobile devices, a competitive FPS title currently known as Project A, a League of Legends fighting game currently known as Project L, and even a League of Legends esports team manager simulator. That's a pretty exhausting lineup and arguably links with the previous bit of news about more bad press from Blizzard. There is speculation that Riot has carefully timed this announcement to try and go toe to toe with that company. PC Gamer referred to the announcements as a declaration of war against Blizzard, and you can kind of understand why. Legends of Runeterra launches in 2020, but you can already see Twitch streamers playing the title, and Riot have made a point of note that there are no random card packs as part of their microtransaction scheme. If it sticks, players could have the perfect alternative to Hearthstone. It's very early days, with some of these titles only going by their project names, but it will be very interesting to see how well these games turn out, and what effects they may have on Blizzard as a company. Good news for grand strategy fans, Crusader Kings 3 was announced earlier this week. It was also confirmed that it was definitely Crusader Kings 3, not Victoria 3, so we managed to clear that up as well. The second game in the series is a well regarded title, though it is a bit daunting and it takes a bit of getting used to. The good news is that Paradox have said that the third title is designed to be the most novice friendly of the series, and if you want to get used to some of the mechanics, Crusader Kings 2 is now free to play on Steam. If all goes well, this should be a critically acclaimed game, but Paradox releases tend to be very hit or miss, so I'm not counting my chickens just yet. With a new game coming, sadly we've also got news of a game that's going to be put on hold, which is Divinity Fallen Heroes, which was originally scheduled for a November release. Larian Studios put out a statement on Tuesday in which it said, quote, It has become clear to everyone involved that the game will need far greater development time and resources than are available now to bring it to fruition in a fun and sustainable way. It's sad to see the successor to the acclaimed Original Sin 2 is on hold until further notice, but on the plus side there is some reassurance that if it does release, it will be done with the necessary effort to make it a fulfilling experience. Bounders Gate 3 is still in development, so it's not a complete loss either. The dates for the remaining Steam sales of 2019 have been leaked by the Steam database Twitter handle on a post made on Saturday. Nothing really surprising here, I think everyone assumed these sales would be coming around as they normally would, but worth a quick mention all the same. So that was the news of this week, thank you very much indeed for watching as always, check out the content on the website, have a look at our other videos and I will see you next time.